What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. It seems like Konami is on fire with products here in 2020. Very few misses among the hits. And OTS 14 looks like another solid entry in the OTS packs. Leaks started coming out today in Zodiac, Instagram, and now we have a ton of sources. And with that, we have every single ultimate rare already between Toon Kingdom, Super Polymerization, and Nibiru. Nibiru is an awesome one to see. A very generic card that will have long-term play this is a great pick for an ultimate rare super polymerization was already an ultimate rare in the ocg and i just ordered a couple for the patreon so i'll have to keep those for myself if you don't know on the patreon i take rarities and upgrades we don't have here in the tcg and then give those out every single month of the 20 dollars and up tier well I kind of missed with those one on the timing. And then Toon Kingdom gets an ultimate rare. This one's a little weird to me considering we just finally got its reprint, but an upgrade is super welcome. I do wonder about the long term with the secret rare version now, since it won't be highest rarity, but is still a classic from Dragons of Legend. Toon Kingdom still looks amazing here in ultimate rare. I think the best looking one is Super Polymerization, which will come in and out of formats. With Dragoon right now, it's a Dragoon out, but it's not seeing play in a lot of the decks and if you think about it Shadol's is probably one of the only rogue decks utilizing this to the max but Nibiru any deck can play that anyone can play that and I think it is a great pick overall now here are a bunch of the super rares we have message in lotto parallel Xe getting an upgrade as well I think these are two that have been very thirsty for upgrades for a long time red layer was printed as early as like in terms of history OTS 10 if I'm not mistaken as a common we'll look that up in a bit but red layer getting a reprint again already it's kind of needed for the fire warrior decks and it's pretty welcome here a pointer of the red lotus only has its one printing it's been a meme among the community for a long time it has floated in and out of formats and a hollow upgrade to it is nice i don't like smoke grenade of the thief getting a super reprint here but if we're stuck with it in the metagame anyways why not make the problem more accessible so that we can bop it on the next ban list hopefully konami having taken notice of this card in the first place does have it on their checks and balance list but it would also be kind of weird to it here's a hollow upgrade then we're gonna bop it we've seen that multiple times with konami though in the past the spirit tokens in here we get four strix which was a great penny stonk getting bopped into super rare here infernity general you have unpossessed and ua signing deal of all things we do have the new uafa support coming so signing deal being one of the best enablers for them getting a uh, super rare here and then some much needed common reprints of demise of the land which was expensive for a long time shade of Brigandine, you also have the Phantom Knight Cloak, Dragoon, not, not the Dragoon you'd be thinking, Atlantean Dragoon, and Void Ogre Dragon. This is a home run of an OTS set. They did a phenomenal job picking the cards. They're not the most, oh my gosh, mind-blowing crazy ones, but Nibiru? great choice and there's rumors of that being in gold series and i want to say this would disprove that a little bit there's other choices that i think disprove it even more like called by the grave being on there but with toon kingdom right here after being reprinted that reprint was so good let's do it again is something konami commonly does let's look at some prices of current cards i actually have this uh on the wrong scene because i have something to talk about later as well so let's get to the market watch view smoke grenade of the thief was like a 20 freaking dollar common and you were lucky to get one near mint that was actually near mint then it is needed for a reprint if it's in the format to make it more accessible even though i dislike the card as a whole a pointer of the red lotus is a tech card that has seen its time and deserves a recognition to get a reprint stardust overdrive has had multiple pricey commons like swap frog and this is one of them good good job on getting this one finally konami super quantum Lay red layer only has its two printings yes it is only uh, as soon as ots pack 10 was its last reprint but people are thirsty for this card the quantities have been low and another hollow foil version that is a mid rarity not the highest rarity i i like it being in the hollow slot and they couldn't have really put it in the common slot again right 
They're not going to ultimate rare that one either. Now, Dragoons has had an ultimate rare, but it's only got two printings, a structure deck and an ulti, so it never got a budget or cheap option as a common fits right in here this has been as high as ten dollars lately whenever we saw the deep seed stuff actually come into eternity code so it's good looking out to give us a budget alternative for people who are interested in the deck shade brigandine only has its two copies one being in a 30 dollar msrp structure deck in the legendary decks and the other one being a gold series premium gold that's years and years ago now this has been a rank four extender it goes along with the engine it goes along with phantom rage that they're trying to sell it all makes sense here. Good job, Konami. And Void Ogre only had one printing. At first, I was like eyebrow raised, then I remembered new Infernity support, and this only having one printing as a boss monster. Good to see. Also, Demise of the Land has been needing a reprint for a long time. It only has one or two printings. I'm pretty sure it is one, though. And we've seen this as high as $12, still sitting at $6. I have a ton in my bulk. Still happy to see so many people get access to this reprint even if it's for the generate strategy like mystic mine eh. this still needed a reprint at some point in time and it's good to see here now besides the ots pack news and i want to hear what you guys do think of all of these do you like the ultimate rare picks do you think there were better cards i know everybody's gonna have preferences towards classic cards or different kinds of meta decks i personally think this is a phenomenal entry to the ots pack series i, I would say solid my ranking would be solid 8 out of 10 it doesn't blow my mind but at the same time I'm happy to see pretty much every card here which is rare for an OTS pack what do you guys think of how it turned out and what would you like to see ultimate that they missed or a super upgrade that they missed they I think did a great job I want to bring up a point that you guys need to be thinking about for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh with all the product delays and there's new ones you might not have heard about we do not have a single release in October for Yu-Gi-Oh cards and the OTS packs are coming out right now so this is pretty much what's new and fresh for a whole month to hunt, hunt down until you get to phantom rage in november then gold series is pushed a week just behind it and my main theme here is you need to budget if you want to get even singles or sealed of these products and you have all of october to do so but also versus black friday deals also versus christmas shopping all this is jumbled right together in this area you have the charmer structured x then push back to november 20th and finally genesis impact in december it's like bam 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 release 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 you guys need to be budgeting for the cards that you might be wanting we don't even know what a lot of gold series is i think there was a leak of dark lord of morning star and it got taken off people are also saying union carrier but there's definitely small little bits and pieces coming out here and there that are murmuring through the community with maximum gold we're waiting to see what's in here how good of a set this will turn out it's a huge question mark but if you think there's going to be things you want you're budgeting right after Phantom Rage. And that's going to have game-changing cards into the metagame between the Phantom Knights. You have your uh, Beast King. What's his name? The 3000 Bounce Boy that's compared to Pankratops. You have the Gundam Mech Xyz. So many cards are actually going to impact the metagame through this set. And then on top of it, amazing reprints and probably imports. Gold Series is historically an import set. Followed by nice little coolant of budget that people will be spending $30 on for their play sets of evenly matched and dark ruler no more hopefully and the genesis impact who knows what's collector rare who knows what they could do it could be something like impermanence in, in the ultra rare slot which would not be the greatest reprint considering it would be only 3.6 per case but then they could collect their rare it at 3.6 per case we would hopefully get like imperm back down to $30 so it would be nice if you don't have imperms but I'd rather see imperm as a common in a structure deck or something at this point but an upgrade I wouldn't object to that either like an ultimate rare and an OTS pack to lead back to the earlier conversation so what do you guys think of the product delays and how November is going to hit people's wallets and what are you planning Black Friday versus product what products are you planning to pick up because November it's getting crazy crowded for products while October there's nothing at all leaving you a whole month to budget and prepare for this situation thanks for watching i was gonna say today's market watch because we did talk about dollars a lot but today's ots pack spoilers again i'm a fan but uh oops stringle i'm a fan of a lot of these um releases i think that they're solid i think this pack looks clean itself 
But I also don't think I'm mind blown by maybe anything but Nibiru. Nibiru, they did a good job with Nibiru. Uh, Super Poly also, I guess I'm, I'm, you know, used to the OCG version of Super Poly a little bit. So maybe that's not why I'm not like, whoa, poggers. But that is a great ultimate rare for the TCG. And then Tomb Kingdom, fan, fa fan favorite, by the way, Tomb Kingdom. I think they did a good job completely with this set. And I haven't seen a single card that I'm just like, ah, that's Papega.